as being closed, discreet, um, gross motor and regulatory. And in regards to Gentile's taxonomy, it's 1A. Right, so for our program, we split it up into two parts and we have short and long-term goals using the SMART principle. So here we have analysis of the skill and its essential components from weeks one to four, and it covers the critical postures and kinematic sequences for each movement and motor skill. All right, so in the four-week program, we're hoping to see the learner progress from a cognitive to an autonomous stage. So during the cognitive stage, we expect to see large errors and um, the learner to be easily distracted. During the associative stage, um, this is when the movement becomes more refined um, and the reinforcement occurs in order to make um, progressions. So coordination and proper muscle recruitment and sequencing become more accurate and efficient. In weeks four to five, we hope to see the learner reach the autonomous stage. And by this stage, the skill should be um, fine-tuned and occur efficiently. Shorter sessions are implemented in the beginning due to a short attention span of the novice learner. So the first session may start from about 30 minutes and as become better, to, um, better able to execute the skill, the sessions may run for 45 to 60 minutes. We have two different ways of measuring performance. Um, you've got qualitative being um, non-numerical and quantitative being numerical. Um, so we have four different ways that we suggest that you can do this um, in, a, um, in the course of a four-week program, uh, one of which being still images. Um, and this is the only qualitative one um, that we've implemented. Um, so you have different images from one to three, and they will give a rough idea of how how well someone has executed the skill and giving them a ranking through those three pictures. Um, we also have an RPE, so this is a um, quantitative measure. And this is purely for the learner and they're able to, um, on a scale of one to 10, say how easy or difficult the movement is for them to execute. Um, so one being very easy and 10 being um, extremely hard. Um, our second quantitative measure we had was um, obviously the weight that's being lifted. So um, how they're able to execute the movement um, without, so first with a, just a body weight and then being able to do that later on with a bar or um, a medicine ball, etc. Um, and lastly, we have um, range of motion. So being able to assess how um, the level of motion the range of motion they have when ex executing the movement. So if they're unable to um, you know, lower themselves into a deep squat in the beginning, then we're trying to work on that and then being able to measure their progress from week to week. So as you can see, we have weeks one to three of the squat and the variations that come with it. We have three pictures, one, two, and three, three being perfect, two being slightly less, and one being not correct form. Picture one scales as a one and is the most incorrect form. Knees are in, elbows are down, head is forward and body is shifted forward. Picture two is scales as a number two. Body is leaned forward, head is forward and arms are slightly down. Picture three scales as the three and is the most correct form. Weight is on the back of the heels, knees are out, elbows are up and posture is correct. Have you ever seen a squat or done a squat before? I've never done one but I've seen people doing squats. Okay, so the reason why I've asked that is because I'm going to get mum to execute a squat right now and I'll explain to you in two seconds why. Can you please show me a squat, one squat, the best way that you know how? Okay, great, perfect. Um, so the reason I've done that is why I want mum to do that is because I have her squatting um, so I can see how she performs the squat. So instead of rattling off 20 cues as to what I think she should do, I might actually find that if I just get her to squat, I can actually see what was wrong and move it on from there rather than give her 20 cues and then find out actually she's done about 80 of them properly and naturally. All right? So what I'm going to get you to do is we're going to try that again. I'm going to demonstrate this for you once. Okay? So what I'm going to work on is feet shoulder width, knees out, posture straight, and I can get three squats from you. As you can see, there was a demonstration of the skill in its entirety in real life time. Next came the verbal cues. For a learner, you don't want to throw too much at them so they get confused. We have come up with an acronym of KARMA. The joke is keeping your client KARMA, which means C for concise, A for accurate, L for limited number, M for meaningful or specific to the learner, and R for repeated. A scale of 1 to 10, 1 being super easy, 10 being really hard, how do you feel about it? About a three. About a three. Perfect. So our learners um, scale that on an RPE scale, one to ten, being three out of ten. So not that challenging at all. And I would say it's pretty safe to progress around during the second week. 
today when you're using dumbbell. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this to you as a whole. The palms are going to face the roof, and I'm going to set my feet up like we practiced last week. So here with effective communication, we're going to talk about what, who, how, and when it should be demonstrated and organized. Here in the example, I have demonstrated the squat skill as a whole, and the learner has observed from afar, trying to look on and pick cues to self-correct. The four occurring processes are attention, retention, behavior reproduction, and motivation. Very good. I really liked the fact that you had your feet showing me apart. But what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to demonstrate what you just showed me and I want you to tell me if you can pick out anything. I think your back is too far to forward to the ground. So your back is, my back is too far forward to the ground. Yes. Correct. Shown here is verbal and demonstration feedback. Later on you can see physical feedback and tactile feedback which fall under the umbrella of this augmented feedback section. Much better. Can I get three more answers? So here in week three, we are learning to unrack, squat, and re-rack the wooden dowel. Each phase is done in separate motions, in part practice, and at the end, we've done it as a whole. For each week, there are options to progress and regress. Progression would show possible mobility, posture, strength, and stability, confidence. Regression would possibly come in the forms of failing one of those categories. All right, so we're here on week four, and I'm teaching mum how to do the um, weighted um, Olympic bar front squat. And what we're talking about here is... Um, where we're placing the bar on the chest. We're talking about foot placement and we're talking about the cues that we spoke about earlier in the program, which were high elbows, posture, knees. And what I did was I got mum to repeat them. So she repeated them out loud for me and she got in and she actually did the squat herself, repeating them out loud. So here we have the retention test at the end of the program. And what I did was I explained to mum I couldn't give her any cues and she had to get in and perform the squat from last week and this is exactly what she did. So the front squat will be learned in part practice because the complexity of this movement is high and the organization is low. The part training method used is fractionization, so where the main components usually trained simultaneously are broken down. For example, training the front squat without weight is reducing the difficulty of the skill. The front squat unracking and re-racking will be learned as part practice as it is high complexity and in low organization, so we're reducing the difficulty of specific skills. Simplification also reduces coordination requirements of a skill reducing attentional demands. So we're starting with the body weight and then finally progressing to the weighted Olympic bar front squat. All right, so here's five week five transfer tests. And what we're doing is I have put together a little workout for mum. So what she's doing is she's has to execute um, three skills before she gets to the front squat. Um, we've already had her do push-ups. She's currently rowing. We'll have her move to the TRX row and then she's going to walk in and up all that execute the movement that we practiced and executed in week four. Ladies and gentlemen, I would call that a success.